welcome to the Republic of Middle-Aged Men. Gentlemen, we have updated our tech. Everything is running Woo-hoo. so much nicer. Uh, I'm very happy. Well, here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so good. Um, for those listening, I was telling the guys here, the Mac I was using prior was out and about when the Xbox 360 was the current console of choice. So I think that's two gaming consoles ago. So, uh, it's nice to have a device that's current. Uh, so yeah, this Mac is a beast. So happy times. It should make the video quality a bit nicer and the production a bit better and easier to work with. So it's very good. good. Very good. Uh, gentlemen, I'm boring. I'm drinking a Coke, no sugar. What are you guys drinking tonight? I have a, uh, something different, a German hell beer. A what, sorry? It's uh, like a, like a pale lager, I suppose you would say. Nice. Someone gave me a few, a few odd German beers, so why not? Nice. Yeah, why not? I do like German beer. Uh, I've just, I've got a glass of water, um, no particular reason. It's just we've been recording intermittently and I just don't really stock the cupboard up with anything. So <laughs> I thought I was being the boring one. At least I had some Coke. <laughs> <laughs> ah, funny. You, you know, it uh, might be uh, rude that you're actually um, living more dangerously. Weren't they just um, saying recently that there was uh, um, lots of bad stuff in Sydney water at the moment? Uh Look, I hate to be that guy that's like, well, I'm old enough to remember when. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm old enough to remember when I was in high school and they were saying the same stuff and you know what I mean? You're still here, buddy. It's all I'm good. Still here. I've been drinking the water for long enough. I'm sure it's done its damage. That's why I drink milk. <laughs> <laughs> I still come back to, I think Archer, do you guys remember the TV show Archer? Yeah. So there's an episode in there where um, Archer's butler, you see him back in one of the wars and his like, boyfriend at the time was his British pilot and he would only ever drink whiskey. And every time someone would give him water, he would say, fish shit in it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, yep. <laughs> So, Fair anyway, well, there you go. Um, right, so finally, we're up to the part of meditations, which isn't the reflective uh, part around those who taught Marcus Aurelius during his the, life. Uh, the I knew a guy part. Yes, <laughs> chapter I knew a guy. That's right. Uh, so, I'm excited. Um, I think we'll jump straight in. So we're up to book two, um, part one, I guess you would call it. So I'll read this out and then we will discuss. Here we go. That's off pretty strong. Yeah, here we go. Begin the morning by saying to yourself, I shall meet with the busybody, the ungrateful, arrogant, deceitful, envious, unsocial. All these things happen to them because of their ignorance of what is good and evil. But I, who have seen that the nature of the good is beautiful, and that the bad is ugly, and that the nature of he who does wrong is akin to me, not only of the same blood or seed, but that it participates in the same intelligence and the same portion of the divinity, I can neither be injured by any of them, for no one can fix on me what is ugly, nor can I be angry with my kinsman, nor hate him, for we are made for cooperation, like feet like hands, like eyelids, like the rows of the upper and lower teeth, to act against one another, then is contrary to nature, and it is acting against one another to become frustrated and to turn away. Interesting. Lots of uh, funny phrases there. The busybody. Haven't heard that one for a while. (laughs) I'm going to feel like you do a whole episode on that one paragraph. Well, let's do it. I mean, nothing's stopping us. <laughs> no, you're right, though. There's plenty like there. Uh, channeling some Epictetus there. 
Yes. Oh, heavily. Yeah. Hmm. So that's that's a good tip. Uh, I think when I wake up, that's usually not an exciting time. I tend to wake up tired and a bit grumpy. Um, so he's straight off the bat is thinking about this stuff. So begin the morning by saying, I shall meet these people. Um, yeah, making sure he gets the right mindset before he starts his day. And, uh, you know, it's um, probably a good thing because you are. I mean, how often are you going to have it? You're sort of uh, driving out in the morning and then uh, some Tesla driver cuts you off, Rubes, and uh, wrecks your morning. (laughs) Tesla drivers are new Camry drivers, I'm telling you. (laughs) I can't quite figure out whether it's a skill issue or whether it's an arrogance issue. (laughs) I don't know if it's... Like forty percent of Tesla drivers were Camry drivers, and forty percent of Tesla drivers were BMW drivers, and you're just seeing the two sort of coming together in some sort of unholy matrimony of indicatorless incompetence. Venn diagram. They are also out of bleeding fluid. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Lachlan knows Tesla is a trigger word for me. Yeah, I, I was uh, chumming the water there. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's good? Like, concerningly, I, I think if I ever do get a Tesla, I'm going to have to hide it from Ruben. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just show up one day to pick him up and he'll just walk outside and just look at me and be like, I thought I knew you. He'll just walk, we'll turn around and walk back inside. Throw. <laughs> he'll be like, walk we're done. Off. We're done. <laughs> but all Rubes has to do is begin the morning by saying to himself, I shall meet Tesla drivers. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, there it is. And he's the emperor too. Like, it's not like he's uh, working in retail. Like, he's the most important dude and he's still getting prepared for these people. Mm. Yeah, I, I suppose in some ways they might get surrounded by more... Um, you know, sycophants and people out to get you than than someone else, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, but uh, but I suppose the busybody <laughs> you wouldn't think would be concerning themselves so much with a uh, with an emperor, but <laughs> yeah, or the ungrateful. Yeah. So. Yeah, interesting. Um, hmm. Look, it's good to know the world hasn't changed. It's been almost two thousand years, and it's still the same. <laughs> um, but I want to I want to move on to the next statement. Um, so where it says "but," but I who have seen that the nature of the good is beautiful, and that the nature, and sorry, and that the bad is ugly, and that the nature of he who does wrong is akin to me, not only of the same blood or seed, but that it participates in the same intelligence and the same portion of divinity. So. It feels like kind of similar to Bible language to me, you know. It's like a, mm. I'm a sinner, and so is other people. Um, that's that's part of the flavor there. But um, that statement of the nature of the good is beautiful. I, I think the idea of beauty. We've talked about this offline before, guys. Like the idea of beauty and the nature of beauty is something that. I sort of appreciating more as I get older. Um, and, and it's a direct result of having read philosophy. I know that. Um, so obviously he's in the same boat. Like he, he notices what's beautiful and he, and he thinks that the nature of good is itself beautiful. Is it something that, prior to reading philosophy you guys would have ever thought about or is it like you like same for me where now that you're reading it you're like oh wow like it's a bit of an eye opener I think I've always had the appreciation but maybe it's just sort of more about connecting the dots um, that it's more than just appreciation I suppose that there's something more to it Hmm. Um, but um, 
but I think certainly like natural beauty and things like that have has often sort of you know stopped me in the tracks. I'm like my guy likes the outdoors and stuff like that, and you know you get up after a you know camping on a misty morning or something and appreciate the the environment and the world you're in and look out at that natural beauty if you know what i mean and yep. stop and stare in awe for a minute yeah how about you roots um yeah no definitely since reading philosophy it's changed my outlook on that sort of things but more from the perspective of i think i used to just think of beauty as uh as aesthetics like physical mm. aesthetics, like something is physically beautiful, something that's good to like beautiful to look at and hadn't really sort of thought about how something can be beautiful. That's not a physical object, if that makes sense. Yep. So mm. the, the, the idea that, um, well, particularly from reading Plato where he's talking about the good and um, he, he sort of, that's all, all that sort of old timey philosophy and that sort of stuff is, it, it all sort of goes into that sort of oneness type thing that like the good and the beautiful and the true are all one. Um, yeah. and then that sort of, that definitely, um, but without getting too heretical starts to kind of dovetail into, into Christianity a lot too, like in, uh, you know when you think about things like Jesus said, like on the way, the truth and the life, like how can he be all those things? And then, you know, it gives you, it gets you thinking, well, what is beauty? Where does it come from? It, it, it seems clear that it's not just a, a, you know, a reaction that's triggered because of something's shape. You know what I mean? Like it's gotta be something mm. more than that. But I think it's also, it's that connection that beauty is, yeah, like you're sort of saying, like it, it is a good or it's linked to to a good, whereas, you know, maybe I would have had an appreciation for it, but not sort of thought about it in that kind of context that it's like that it's worth appreciating it yet, not just for that aesthetic, but for the for the good that it is, you know, and what it maybe represents and all that sort of thing as well. Because it did sort of maybe feel shallow before. But I think there's something more to that beauty, and there, there is a there is a good behind it, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Um, that doesn't make you feel, uh, yeah, shallow for appreciating it, if you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah, I get you. Um, I remember watching uh, the extended editions of Lord of the Rings, and there's a flashback scene where you see Boromir. Um, it's only in the extended editions. I think Faramir is remembering Boromir and they've just taken back the city that eventually gets overrun. Um, and Boromir is like giving a speech to the soldiers and he talks about how the city represented, you know, certain values, including beauty. And mm. um, I don't know, it's, it hits me differently that flashback now when I see that. Cause I think I just used to think, the good guys city like it looked beautiful when they were in charge and the the bad guys the, the city looked not beautiful but yeah so you get what i mean it's like, transitioning from uh, good to bad over that time as well because the you know the the beauty is reflecting of it yeah correct mm. I, I think the other interesting thing about that paragraph you're talking about too tim was just <clears throat> He starts out by sort of referring to um, that this is because of their ignorance about it, and you know, yeah, he was, I was calling out. The... <clears throat> I was going to raise that too. I thought it might be, mine's a little bit different. I know there's a translation issue, but yeah, sorry, um, sorry, Lock, we'll continue. No, that's all good. Um, just because, you know, I, I think he's trying to link to, uh, you know, his kinsmen and um, you know everyone else who's around him and like there's a certain level of, um, I suppose, love and care for them as though they're his own, which again, maybe, maybe that's why it's kind of sounding biblical a bit to you, to, uh, Tim, like, and that's mm. kind of a bit of like love thy neighbor, even if, um, you know, he's an asshole, uh, because, you know, we're all, um, we're all one and the same in, in a part of it. And you've just got to kind of forgive their ignorance that, that they don't have the same understanding that you do of the, um, uh, 
um, the good and bad and the, the the beauty and the ugliness out in the world. Well, I think, yeah, I think the other thing that makes me feel like it's biblical is the body analogy. Because um, mm. the, the church is often described as a body and that there's different parts of the body. And so, you know, talk at, at the end of this passage here, it says that, um, you know, for we are made for cooperation, like feet, like hands, like eyelids, like the rows of the mm. upper and the lower teeth. To act against one another is then contrary to nature and it is acting against one another to become frustrated and turn away. Like that's very similar to bear with one another. Um, and yeah, you're all well, part of one body of the church. Yeah. Um, yeah, 100%. Hmm. Um, my, I don't know when my translation is different, but the line right after the, it says, get ready to deal with the meddling, ungrateful, aggressive, treacherous, malicious, unsocial. And the line, next line after that is, in my translation, is all this has afflicted them through their ignorance of true good and evil. Hmm. Is that, is that, Oh, did I miss that? Have you got that line there or is that framed a lot? Yeah, yeah. Ours, ours says all these things happen to them because of their ignorance of what is good and evil. Yeah, so I guess it's the same thing in essence. But I think that's interesting too because he's, he's like, get ready to deal with these people. But then there's like an immediate reframing of it. It's almost like saying, but they're not doing it because they're trying to hurt you. Although some of them might be. But it's kind of like it's because they, it's kind of like saying, "Well, yeah, but they don't understand." It's almost like the way that you would not get upset with the child's behavior, the same way yeah. that you would get upset with an adult's behavior. Because, like, well, they, sh you know, it, it's not sort of they should have known better. It's like, well, they just didn't know better. So that's kind of I don't know. It's an interesting way to reframe um, other people's behavior, and it, that's I think that's what leads into when he starts talking about you know, the, the body and, and, and we're all part of the same sort of like the, the unity stuff later, because it's almost like he's saying, you know, th these people are going to annoy you, but think about the idea that maybe they, they just don't understand. They don't understand yeah. what they're doing because they don't understand good and evil. This kind of reminds yeah, me of, of um, yeah, correct. Yeah. That's about to say. It reminds me Sorry, of that. Good luck and stuff. Oh, they're just, uh, they're still in Plato's cave. So, yeah. um, you know, haven't had their eyes open to it yet. So have patience with them. <laughs> yeah, I, the, I, I, I had a bit of a chuckle to myself reading that bit too, because it's kind of like you could, you could really use that in a condescending way as well. <laughs> yeah, true. Yeah. yeah. The, the ignorant peasants. <laughs> yeah. Which, like, you know, I'm, you know, I'm, not even, I'm not even bothered going to get upset with you because you're you basically you just don't get it. You're an idiot. <laughs> What's the point? You know I, mean? I don't think that's the way you mean it, but that's I just that just occurred to me. <laughs> well, it's funny you mentioned that because I, like I know we're having like a um, <laughs> offline conversation about this um, a, a while back, but in some ways it's a bit like uh, I can't remember who that guy was who was talking that WEF um, uh, panel. And the way he was talking about people, what was it like the the useless dumb masses or something like that? Oh, Yuval um, Harari, yeah, yeah, yeah. And refer, we refer to useless eaters. He talks about the useless eaters. That's right. That's right. And it, like you think about that, and that's kind of like the opposite to how Aurelius is is kind of approaching it, right? It's exactly what you're talking about, Rubes. Like that's the the flip side of what a tyrant mm. would sound like. Yeah, okay. I think I see that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I just on that, you can't read this book and not be impressed with the man of Marcus Aurelius. For sure. Like he is a, an impressive man. It he had all that power and, and still has this level of compassion and care for his people for mm. all people. It's a interesting read. Do you think I don't? I, just a question. I don't really know the answer, obviously, which is why I'm asking it. But um, so, do you think he's saying there that right and wrong, people doing right and wrong, are a question? Is not really a, is a question of um, uh, of understanding. Like, do, uh, do you think 
do you think the idea there is that if they knew better, they would do otherwise? I think he's giving them that benefit of the doubt. Yeah, he's probably yeah. not presenting it as a universal idea of right and wrong. He's not saying everyone that does right and wrong is because they just don't know better. Yeah. I'm not sure whether that's the claim. Yeah, I I think uh, I think he's giving them the benefit of the doubt. You know, assuming that it runs in the cave still. So. Yeah, I I don't think he'd be naive in this sense, in that he would sort of say like that. You know, there may well be some like like truly evil people out there who knowingly are evil, right? Um, yeah, they, they know what's right and wrong, but they choose evil regardless. Mm, yep. Mm. But I think, you know, when he's just talking about the general the general population, and because, I, mean, I mean, a lot of the stuff they're sort of talking about there is just really, you know, ungrateful, arrogant, deceitful, um, envious. And so it's, it's very generic human behaviour rather than sort of like the malevolent, sort of yeah 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 so i think yeah, it's just, yeah. but i mean if the if the the central claim is you um you're acting selfishly or you're acting uh, if you're acting uh, you know ungratefully if you're ultimately it's wrong um and it's and it's going to be harmful to you because you don't understand that it's wrong is that, uh, yeah, I'm not sure. Could, couldn't that, that same, that claim just be expanded to somebody who's more, who chooses to do the wrong thing? It's like, if you really knew the price of what you're doing, you wouldn't do it. It's kind of, kind of almost like, like Plato was saying in his apology. Mm. If you really knew what you're about to do to me, you wouldn't do it. Yeah. You know, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 All right. Um, do you want to move on to part two? Yeah. Let's do it. Yeah, cool. All right. Here we go. Whatever this is that I am, it is a little flesh and breath and the ruling part. Throw away your books. No longer distract yourself. It is not allowed. But as if you were now dying, despise the flesh. It is blood and bones and a network of nerves, veins and arteries woven together. See the breath also, what kind of a thing it is. Air, and not always the same, but every moment sent out and again sucked in. The third then is the ruling part. Consider thus, you are an old man, so no longer let this be a slave. No longer be pulled by the strings like a puppet to unsocial movements. No longer either be dissatisfied with your present lot or shrink from the future. This again, great awareness. You know, you read mm. about other people that were emperors in different scenarios. Like even Caesar, I think, by the end of his reign, really actually thought he was a god. Hmm. You read this guy and he's like, I'm just flesh and blood, nerves and air. Hmm. But there's a third part of me. Again, the two, the despise of flesh, that reminds me of Paul a bit. What, what are your thoughts about that, Ruben? Uh, um, what Paul bit were you thinking of? Like Paul often wrote about, um, putting to death the nature of the flesh. Yeah. Like it's, a, it's not the same because obviously he's talking about sinful nature there. But yeah. It, just, it feels a similar way of speaking. Uh, yeah, similar way of speaking. Um, I, but I think also, um, well, you could take anything too far, I suppose, when he says despise the flesh. Well, yeah. The flesh you should disdain. Obviously, you could take that too far. Does your word say the same words for that, or is it a different translation? 
Uh, now the flesh you should disdain, blood, bones, and mere fabric, the network of nerves, veins, and arteries. Consider too what breath is, wind, and not even a constant, but all the time being disgorged and sucked in again. That leads to the third part, the directed mind. Quit your books, no more hankering. This is not your gift. Yeah, interesting. Um, the language is a lot more straightforward in your one. Hmm. I was tempted to um, stop reading after it said throw away your books and just shut it. <laughs> <laughs> just for comedic well, I mean, effect. Doesn't it, it says that it's something, well, once again, not the same, but similar. Doesn't it say that either, I think it's the end of Proverbs or maybe at the end of Lamentations. There's a line at the end of, I think it's, I think it's Proverbs towards the end. It says that much reading is, you know, reading books is just endless and shouldn't do too much of it kind of thing. Yeah, I reread all of Ecclesiastes on Thursday night or Friday night. So there's bits in there that say a similar thing. Yeah. He who increaseth in knowledge increaseth in sorrow. Yeah. Um, um, but oh, the reason I say that I mentioned you could take that too far is um, there's sort of some ideas in ancient philosophy, um, which translates to some modern philosophy that that you should despise the flesh in the sense that our earthly, you know, they describe the body as an earthly prison kind of thing and, 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 and enlightenment is breaking free of the flesh. And like, you know, I mean, that's like an example of taking it too far. Yeah. You know, like, almost a modern example of it would be like, um, you know, like, oh, my will is is so much more important than my flesh that I could, you know, mutilate my fresh flesh to become what I want. You know yeah. what I mean? Like you can disdain just disdain the flesh to that point where it would, you know, it's it's wrong. But yeah, I mean that probably comes from all sorts of different kinds of fundamental beliefs, I suppose. Yeah, this this sort of makes me more think of Memento Mori, you know, of remember you will die. It's more that mm. sort of attitude of it's the flesh and blood isn't forever. Don't get sucked in by it. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is a much more balanced in that sense. It's not like the, not like the kind of, um, Buddhist, I don't know. There's a Buddhist, one of those, you know, those Buddhist or there's some monks or whatever, Eastern monks or whatever, where they basically, they're like, like, oh, if I destroy all desire and disdain the flesh, I can become one again with the, you know, world consciousness, like that sort of gear, you know, like yeah, those, those ones that, those monks, that just, yeah, those, those Buddhist monks that just, they, they basically, never eat or whatever and they yep. just walk away i don't think that's the what he's angling for i think there's a modern people trying to do that though too because if you have a look at what you know people are aiming for with like um the singularity i think there's um i think there's a lot of like yeah 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 people who want to um drop the flesh and just become consciousness somewhere on a server <laughs> yeah digital consciousness <laughs> something like that i don't know i mean not to rag on them but um but that's probably the example like the modern example of taking that the step too far yeah mm. what do you think about the last part where it's saying um You know, you're an old man, so don't let the ruling part be a slave. Don't be pulled by the strings like a puppet to unsocial movements. No longer either be dissatisfied with your present lot or shrink from the future. Hmm. That kind of makes me just think of courage, like one of the stoic virtues were to have courage. Is that a good way to describe that or summarize that? Is have courage? Um yeah i think so but i think it's also like a call to live in the moment and to be content not 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 be controlled by your immediate desires and also your fear of the future yep mm. enslave you any longer yeah interesting prison system yeah that's very similar to that, to the epic, you know, all that epic Tita stuff about, you know, don't let, uh, don't let things control 
you yeah. don't let you don't let your fears control you or anxieties control you things that you can't control other people's whatever and your own fear of the future don't let that control you in the present again as i've gotten older that's something that's definitely happened i i certainly don't care as much in my 40s about what people think about me than i did in my 20s mm-hmm. um and i'm more confident in the person i am and if i set a direction for myself that's where i'm going not in an arrogant bullheaded way but just uh, i i think properly about things i try to use good judgment i try to move forward in the right way so i don't know do you guys i know both of you quite well i know that's probably true for both of you too yeah i'd say so yeah, yeah i think so Make- yeah, you do. You, as you definitely, yeah, definitely as you get older, you care less about what other people think about you. Do you think that's good? Or, like, is that actually the right statement? Or are we saying we, we, we put less value on passing opinions? Would that be a better way of saying it? Like, I think... That's a nice way to say it. <laughs> yeah yeah but like like if i was trying to do something and both of you guys approached me and went hey listen what you're doing is stupid you need to change course um i'd probably listen to that because i value the the friendship from you two and and perceive that there's a a genuine care for me coming from there whereas if it's just someone who you know i work for 10 hours a week with or is passing you by I don't really care if they think I look cool in my straw hat shirt my chopped beanie or not you know but um, <laughs> you know what I mean like is it more we but probably, probably care not. in a different way like in a better well, it, way it's, it's maybe not that you're going to ignore <clears throat> ignore it all like just carte blanche you know what I mean yeah, you might listen to it. You might even think about it, and you go, "No, I'm pretty confident. I've got my, you know, got my core set, and I'm I'm happy with it." Um, uh, I don't know. I mean, you can certainly value the um, advice of others, um, but I think at the end of the day, it's still probably something that I think you'd have the confidence to weigh it up in your own mind to pitch that against the idea you had and you're still making your own decision. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, but I think the thing certainly I noticed with you is that like, if you choose to disagree with someone, that's cool. Um, and like that doesn't bother you and it's not in a, a rude or arrogant way. It's like, Oh, that's okay. You know, I, I just disagree. I, and that's that. Yeah. I take it or leave it. <laughs> like, like, yeah you're not being a, a, a jerk about it. It's just like, I, I have a different opinion and I'm not changing it. So <laughs> yeah, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I don't think it's with arrogance. It's just, uh, um, it's just with a, a fact that you've considered something and made a decision and would back it. Not that you wouldn't change your mind if you, if you thought that some, some other, you know, information came along or decision would, you know, be useful. I know you'd take it on too. Yeah. I'm just, I'm aware that, you know, one day my son might listen to this episode. So I I just think, you know, I want to make sure that's defined. Like that's an important thing. I want to make sure that's defined properly, that it's, it's definitely, I don't care what the mob says, um, but I still take into account the wisdom of, close friends that's probably a good way of saying it yeah but you're happy to go against the grain like yeah. of the masses <laughs> yeah um yeah i think that's a good i think i think we've nailed that um all right let's move on three all that is from the gods is full of providence. That which is from fortune is not separated from nature 
or without an interweaving and involution with the new things that are ordered by providence. From thence all things flow, and there is besides necessity and that which is for the advantage of the whole universe, of which you are a part. But something is good for every part of nature, if brought by the nature of the whole, and what serves to maintain this nature. Now the universe is preserved by the changes of things compounded of the elements as by the changes of the elements themselves. Let these principles be enough for you. Let them always be fixed opinions, but cast away your thirst for books, so that you may not die murmuring, but cheerfully, truly, and from your heart, thankful to the gods. I'm not sure I really follow that bit. I mean, I approve of <laughs> I approved to the call of uh, call for gratitude at the end of it. Um, yeah, but the rest of it, I'm I'm not sh- sure. Is, he, is like is he making broad metaphysical claims there about the nature of reality, or is it something less than that? I, I'm I'm really not sure. Well, they might be still talking about if 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 you recall in the Republic when they're talking about the fates, and yeah, I, I definitely think they're talking about fate. Yeah. That and you, uh, you know, once your lot is cast, it's up to you with what you do with your your sort of lot or you know fortune. They're sort of referring to there. I think um, it's. I think they're just sort of saying that it's. You know, perhaps if your lot has been cast in that way, then um, that's. Um, you know that you've just got to make the best of what you've what you've got there. I mean, he doesn't really sort of say that. I suppose it's just sort of like. I think he's just saying it's the way it is because that is that is nature. So um, sort of appreciate it for what it is and, and try to make the best of it, maybe. I think, yes, I, I think it's um, a complicated way of saying um, if bad things happen to you, it's for the good of the universe. So by default, it's actually not truly a bad thing. So get over it. I think that's yeah. basically what he's saying. And the further fact is a necessary necessity. Yeah, that bit where he says, and the further fact is our necessity and the benefits, the benefit to the whole universe of which yeah. you're a part. Yep. It kind I'm of not sure quite how you... Oh, sorry, go. I just wasn't sure how he rolls on to that, uh, onto the, the bit about um, sort of um, cast away your, your thirst for books so you may not die murmuring. <laughs> I wasn't quite sh- sure what the link was there. Like, I, I just assumed, I don't know, I, I kind of just assumed uh, he's basically saying that look, there's all sorts of different opinions about what the universe is and how it works. And he's basically saying, you know, this is this is it like it's it's kind of thankful yeah be thankful and and don't waste your time trying to figure this other stuff out because it's it's Mm. it's really that simple but uh, i could be misreading that altogether so is he saying we're uh wasting our time philosophizing about it (laughs) just get out there and live it yeah it's kind of like it's really that simple though You, you can't really change it ultimately so there's no point trying to spend all your time trying to figure it out in detail and taking all these different ideas when what's going to, it's kind of like saying what's going to happen is going to happen. So don't, don't fret over it. Don't try to figure it out. Just accept it. But like I said, that might be a little bit uncharitable. So it's uh it's, it's really just Nike. Just, uh, just do it. <laughs> do <Yeah>. it. <laughs> Shia <Yeah. LaBeouf. laughs> yeah. I was going to say that, um, that kind of reminds me of, uh, demotivational poster that I used to love and um, they had a picture of the Titanic sinking and um, it said what was it something like fate or something like that it said it could be the sole purpose of your existence is to serve as a warning to others <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's kind of that kind of nails it in a way yeah <laughs> you might have stuffed up big time but and you may not have learnt from it but somebody will yep <laughs> So be thankful to the gods that you're helping the universe. Yeah, you're, it's a net benefit to the universe, even if you can't see it. Even yeah. if you're the one 
suffering. <laughs> it feels very um, imperialistic. Like your sacrifice shall be remembered for eternity. You know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Cool. All right. <clears throat> let's uh let's move on. Okay. Um chapter 2 part 4. Remember how long you have been putting off these things and how often you have received an opportunity from the gods and yet do not use it. You must now at last perceive of what universe you are a part and of what administrator of the universe your existence is an outflowing and that a limit of time is fixed for you. And if you do not use it for clearing away the clouds from your mind, it will go, and you will go with it, and it will never return. The clock is ticking, Malaka. That's what he's saying there. <laughs> yeah, stop procrastinating and get on with it. <laughs> he was a busy dude by all accounts. That's probably why. He was very aware of it. I want to ask this. I I feel like every year there's less and less time. But yep. when I reflect on how many hours I spend at work, I'm at work a lot less than I used to be. And it just feels like the days have gone from 24 hours to, to 17. It's a weird feeling I, I don't know if it's because i now that i'm older i'm trying to look after myself better so i make sure i have things like eight to nine hours sleep every night instead of five or six because hmm. uh, i just get punished hard if i have five or six hours sleep now <laughs> are you guys finding the same thing like does it feel like every day is just shorter and there's too much to do yeah i mean life's busy um but also, you know, time is relative and the longer you're on the, the planet for, you know, your, your reference to time gets sort of shorter and shorter. So I just, I find the weeks go by like the blink of an eye now and just seems to get faster and faster and faster. But, but life's busy, like aside from work. Um, I, I suppose like, you know, whilst when I'm at work, like I prioritize what I'm doing with work and I like, I work hard because that's, that's part of my ethic. Um, but, um, but there's plenty going on at home, right? Lots of kids activities to get to. There's no shortage of things to do and, uh, uh, a lack of time to do them. I had a thought a couple of days ago, I started working 25 years ago and in 25 years, I'll be 68, which is proper retirement age. Therefore, mm. I'm halfway through my working life. That that occurred to me, it must have been two or three days ago. I was like, oh, wow, I'm actually at the halfway mark. Yeah. For work. That could be even slightly further if I get all my ducks in a row and get to retire early. But that's kind of, I was like, wow, I still don't know what I want to do when I grow up. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky you're a bunch uh, around a bunch of other middle aged men, mate. So uh, oh. we're all in the. In the I mean, ironically, you sort of say that, but um, it was just last week. I was actually like looking at my super and when I was likely to retire and all that sort of thing. It's, it's pretty funny um, that you're talking about that because it, it was something I was looking at. Have you thought about it, Ruben, or is it. You saw you behind me. <laughs> about to, you know, I've I heard a lot of people say that they feel like time goes faster as they get older, and I've experienced the same thing, um, which is kind of, I guess, what Lachlan was saying about relative, like time can be a little bit relative in that sense. Um, but I, all I know is that as I've gotten older, I've become increasingly conscious about how you spend your time, which is kind of what that paragraph you just read is saying, it's like, you know, in a real simple sense, like don't, you're going to run out of time. Don't waste it. Like, what are you, what are you using it for? Like what, what, what's actually valuable, valuable, but I don't know how much of that is a sense of, um, time slipping away and how much of it is more of a sense of just trying to decide what 
what to value, what is actually valuable. Mm. And the way you spend your time is, is, is one of the things that, um, is one of those things that you have to decide what's, what's, what's worth holding on to. I think he's like also saying something about like, you know, it's like God's giving you this time and you're squandering it and it's going to be gone. So if you're not doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing, you're going to miss your opportunity. So, um, you need to sort of get moving and shoot your shot in a way. Hmm. Hmm. When's the last time you guys listened to Pink Floyd's Dark Side of the Moon? Long time ago, actually. It's been a while. Oh, 12 months? Yep. I used to listen to that album all the time when I was 16 to 20 years old. And now I listen to it and it hits different. It hits different, man. Because, you know, like opening song, you know, you fritter and waste the hours and the, what is it? Fritter and waste the hours. In off in way and but then like you you as the song says you you realize the years have gone what's happened <laughs> you're running uh, you catch up to the sun but it's sinking yeah have a listen to that album after tonight's chat guys and you'll just be like yeah it's a scary think- scary album and i think i understand why the old boys who i grew up with like who so like my uncles and dad and all these other guys that used to listen to that album all the time. I think I know why mm. they don't listen to it anymore. <laughs> the more, the older you get, the more those words hit. Yeah. I actually don't think I feel like I don't have enough time. I just think I have an increased sense of, um, when I've wasted time. So I don't get mm. to the end of the day and think, Oh gee, I didn't have enough time to do X, Y, Z. I get to the end of the day and I was like, I kind of think, why did I spend time doing that when I could have been doing this? You yeah. Know, if that makes sense. So it's more of a shift in the value of time rather than a sense that I'm running out of it. Hmm. I have more of an urgency than I used to have. I get, hmm. uh, it's weird. Like in, in some ways I'm very patient compared to how I used to be, but with time being wasted, I don't have a lot of patience for that anymore. I'm like, today I was planning to catch up with my parents, but they were busy. So I was at home and I just worked on the house for seven hours straight, just getting more done and getting things clean. And because I just saw, like, oh, wait, there's a big seven day opportunity, seven hour opportunity here where I can smash out more jobs that need to get done. Um, could have just sat down and watched some movies or chilled, but it's like, nah, it's too much to do. I'm the same way. It's um, my mother-in-law always sort of says it to me because even when I'm at her house, um, it's like, Lachlan, can you sit down? Because like, I'm always like walking around because I can just sort of see I'll be just like pick something up or I just kind of tuck that away and just there's always stuff to do, you know what I mean? Yeah. So just, yeah, I don't sit in my backside too often. <laughs> That's very rare. <laughs> I I don't do well when I do. Uh, mm. I heard I heard it described, I don't know who told me this saying, but it's true for me. It's uh, the still mind is the devil's playground. Mm. If I'm just not doing anything meaningful, it's not a good place for me to be. I can be alone as long as I'm doing meaningful things, but alone doing meaningless things. That's yeah. not good for me. <laughs> so, yeah, it's interesting. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I like the sense of urgency, though. I think it's important. Yeah, me too. Um, I'm enjoying this. This is really good. Um, for those listening, thanks for joining us. We'll skip the pub for lots of us. We've started a bit late because I was getting things set up with our new hardware. So it can be a slightly shorter episode this week, but that's all good. But um, Lachlan Rubin, thank you very much for joining me. And uh, we'll catch you guys soon. Yeah, thanks, James. Bye. Catch up.